people believe see i don't want to work for someone else but someone else has to work for you know <laughs> that i was lucky to have born in a village born in a family which was poor i must tell you here i became the head of the family at the age of 10 maa banne ke liye ek umar hota hai entrepreneur banne ke liye bhi ek umar i just spent the last two hours with somebody that has been a mentor to me has been an investor in our company but more than anything one of the most entertaining podcasts i've done in my entire life it was with dr velu mani who was the founder and creator of thyrocare who's had one of the largest exits in the country we went through tons of his punch lines which are each and every one of them is not only entertaining it is filled with knowledge which you can live on for decades we spoke about his humble beginnings we spoke about his rise we spoke about all the challenges he faced how he overcame them and how he is now unboxed success pause when you want to make notes where you want to i will make sure all the punch lines are available in a place where you can download all of them and i can promise you that's a book coming up very soon with only punch lines from dr velumani now let's go watch the episode thanks a lot guys Dr. Velumani I think this is the interview I have been looking forward to for the last 2 years since I started podcasting this is something I've been wanting to do and uh, you have no idea how exciting this is for me and I'm so glad we're doing this at your house in Bangalore uh first of all thank you for having me and my team over here um you are somebody who's very close to me you are uh, you've mentored me for the last 4 5 years you've helped us as an organization to get stronger but more than anything else I think you've helped me see what i am capable of doing i remember the first time we had a conversation you asked me you know when are you going to ipo and i gave you a date and you like i'll get you there in half the time and that that statement still hasn't left me uh, doctor before we jump into thyro care and post thyro care i would love to go back a little bit can you tell us a little bit about your childhood yeah i think my childhood was a happy childhood not a troubled one my childhood had no food but it has enough uh, emotions and happiness and uh, we were five children for a father who was neither an employee nor an employer and my mother uh, i call her as a lady with guts grits both and uh, any other lady would have given up but i think she took it head on didn't ask any relative to support didn't borrow from anyone she made sure that the two buffaloes she had provides enough for the children to survive we didn't have any costly convent education it was a, you know single teacher school five classes one classroom one class teacher oh my god and uh, we all uh, children could uh, manage to do a graduation in madras university and a post graduation in mumbai university mind you all not with big salaries it's all by just a hard work of one lady so i call it as uh, i was lucky i keep telling my children today fortunately i was poor now this phrase is not understood by many and had i not been poor i might have not been as capable as i am today i didn't have convent education i didn't have so called school bus dropping parents dropping in school uh, guides uh, um, atlas dictionary all were only with some neighbors not with us i believe that what i got is knowledge not just a degree and the people who are born in village and born to poor are highly lucky because you know poverty means <coughs> every day challenges morning to evening problem solving and at eight age of 5 you start solving problems and the problems which are larger than what you can handle i think that gives it's like a weight lifting 
uh, you know, the more you lift, the bigger you lift, the more powerful you become. So he has problems for a youth. If he can solve more problems, bigger problems, he becomes strong. So I am again repeating that I was lucky to have born in a village, born in a family which was poor, had five siblings. That's another important thing because you have emotions around, life around people. So I must tell first 20 years of my life is something which is very, very important for every individual to go through. It's not easy. But again, my punchline is what is easy is not right. And what is not what is right is not easy. So I think I was lucky to have <coughs> challenged. I think when you remain challenged, either you become powerful or you succumb. I think I didn't succumb. I could manage to lead the family. I must tell you here, I became the head of the family at the age of 10. To that extent, my mother needed support and was the eldest in the home. Mm. So I thought I am enjoying uh, seeing her comfortable was my primary goal. I think uh, all those children who wants parents' comfort mm. become very powerful leaders. And all those parents who are looking for children comfort are likely to have challenges in the long run. You had used a phrase which stayed with me for a very long time, luxury of poverty. That's a phrase you will not believe gets used in my house at least once a week. When my kids want something, it's not about affording it, but I, I keep telling them you have to earn it. It's not that we don't have the money, we can go buy a new Lego, we can go buy a new something. But the sense of earning it is very different and just because your neighbor has it doesn't mean you have to have it, right? So that, that the luxury of poverty, I think, is a very important concept. Actually, I'll explain you, luxury of poverty is not an ability to buy or not. Mm. It's an ability to live or not. Because buying, not buying is not going to totally collapse you. Mm. But if you don't have a challenge-facing capability, you lose an ability to build that power. And if you have not solved too many problems too early, your problem solving capability itself dies off. And if you, if you are, uh, you know, coached from the age of three, lifelong you need to be coached. So these are all challenges which I believe is uh, solved by poverty. And if there are too many servants at home, uh, the child is less likely to be capable of doing things on his own in the long run. Dependency starts, dependency continues. Many don't agree with me, but for some reasons I keep telling, love the children, don't pamper them. Very often pampering kills the entire scope of life. It kills their drive. They have nothing to achieve because if you give them everything at a young age, what is the aspiration? What are they going to do? There is nothing that they are aspiring to do. Uh, how? Touching upon this, what advice would you give new parents? Because you are a fantastic parent. Uh, I, I know you're both son and daughter and uh, I see what you've you know given to them. What advice would you give me as a parent? I have two kids. I have an 11-year-old son and a 7-year-old daughter. What advice would you give me? Like maybe the top three things I should do for my kids that will make sure that they are successful in life. Successful doesn't mean only business. Any kind of like just having a happy life. What, what would you ask me to do? Sir? I have a punchline. The punchline is, parent, comma, don't pamper. This is just three words. Parenting is helping the child to think more. Pampering is helping the child to do more. Now, if you can make your child to think and solve, you don't have to keep doing it lifelong. But if you have started solving their problem, including current day mothers are solving the homeworks also, carrying the children wherever they want to go, dropping the children in a car wherever they have to go, this means you are pampering. There are many who think, I am entitled because I have money. I am entitled because I have money. But mind you, money can be poison. So this is something which many parents are not understanding and it has to be driven to them Keep the money in safe, 
to keep your children safe <laughs> <laughs> that is a, that one is going to stay with me sir that is brilliant but this was an instant punch <laughs> <laughs> sir today when a lot of people are making a, a fair bit of money how do you keep it away from children like you just don't take them for vacations you just don't spend that much on them how would you because today so many people who are listening will have enough means they can you know buy fancier cars they can go on fancier vacations they can have three people maids at home how do you make sure that your kids still stay centered very difficult and especially in school because in school at, at home okay you can live a very you know uh, minimalist life but as soon as they go to school they see other kids with everything and then they'll ask okay daddy he has a this new pencil box or he has this how do you handle that i think this is a dilemma challenge especially for those who have money people don't have money put it put the children in a municipal or corporation school the problems are less in the minute you borrow money take my emi and put your child at a school where you are not entitled to the child becomes addicted to all those uh, things which are not really he is entitled to now parents need to live a humble be frugal now parents themselves are very busy in taking emi to create an artificial environment for their life the child is punchline here children are employees mm. don't listen they only follow <laughs> so don't preach practice so this is the most powerful punchline absolutely Your parents don't uh, practice the child is not going to follow it's very simple having said that there are two aspects of life one is creation another is consumption every man should know uh, that creation gets the things in hand consumption takes things away from the hand the more you create then less you consume you become richer but as a parent you yourself is consuming more and creating less and you don't teach child how to create and only to consume you deserve to become beggar only that's simple true so anyhow children need to be taught what is right and what is good and of course if the children love you they listen to you now how to make children to love you that's another huge art it's not that something which is available in a book which you can read and make it to happen i think children should not unnecessarily know that there is lot of money at home number 1 and children also should not think that money comes from atm and emi is not a worry these are all the things which are uh, children have to be taught i'll tell you one thing which i did which my children criticize me even today little more mocking me rather dad when i was 13 our neighbor boy who was 15 was having a video game when i t- told i also want a video game you said at 15 only it's ideal to buy not at 13 i fully agreed with you then when i became 17 i reminded you you told it is a good game only at 15 not at 17 <laughs> that is what you need to do don't refuse you tell a logical answer which the child should believe and you should be logical enough that child believes your logics <laughs> <laughs> i think that's a basis of parenting uh, Uh, sir now uh, you told us that you came to uh, mumbai then tell me tell us about your journey after that after you came to mumbai yeah actually i also wish to tell about what forced me to come to mm. mumbai because um, why a madrasi who does not know even hindi or marathi comes to mumbai at an age of 24 mm. very very important mm. so i didn't get a right job mm. um, under employment first unemployment underemployment and after 4 years uh, that underemployed 
employer also collapsed fortunately and then uh, at an age of 24 i was uh, very keen to search for a job and uh, times of india newspaper wednesday comes with lots of situation vacant which used to come on friday to coimbatore and a library and i was a frequenter to the library and i found an advertisement of baba atomic research center and it asked for a first class bsc which i had so i thought i should apply of course it costed me 30 rupees to post that application with all enclosures all photographs everything uh, which was a fortune then yeah but then i think uh, i was keen to invest money you know very important here a punchline two situations where you spend money one is an expenditure another is an investment and if you can differentiate you will be very powerful so it was an investment and i got an uh, interview letter mm. so then i came to mumbai august 18 1982 jainti janta express mm. from kanyakumari to mumbai via coimbatore mm. s9 coach mm. seat number 41 <laughs> and i tried the entire journey because i was uh, imagining i will leave my uh, family and my mother who depended a lot on me but i consoled her telling that i will get a very decent stable permanent government job mm. which she felt is precious so i reached mumbai and uh, in a monsoon day i came on day in advance because i was born poor and i didn't want to lose by experimenting going on that day of interview fortunately it rained a lot on the day i arrived mm. so not many people could reach for interview and that's one of the reason why i got my job in baba atomic research center so i am now in mumbai i now have a government job i think that has completely changed my journey i don't think it was imagined even 6 months before that i would be working for a country's most premium scientific research institution and that to uh, a, 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 a central government salary means you know how value it gives for a boy at an age of 25 so that's how it started and uh, for some strange reasons i was put in a hospital mm. in a diagnostic laboratory where i am supposed to do blood testing now i have i was a mathematics man i was supposed to have gone for engineering because i was poor i couldn't do that so i did the bsc chemistry maths and physics subs, uh, subsidiaries because i had a chemistry they told me you are ideal for doing test in the lab i didn't know where thyroid was on the day when i <laughs> joined in brc i think i keep telling on stages in 1982 i did not know where thyroid was in 1992 i finished a phd in thyroid biochemistry and in 2002 i am running world's largest thyroid testing laboratory which means the punchline is if you do what you have studied if you do what you have studied you will survive but if you do what you have not studied you will be the leader so try to do something which you have not studied <laughs> very unique way of uh, looking at uh, uh, the outcome mm. you know initially had i told this punchline people would have laughed at me mm. and that also gives rise to one more punchline all punchlines are really understood only a man successful and then talking otherwise it is known as gappa <laughs> <laughs> Right, so you're known for your punchlines. Any time I've interacted with you professionally, personally, any time you've interacted with our team at Equinox, the first time you came to Equinox, the entire team was scared. I don't think I don't know if you remember where we were in the basement in that big hall, and the entire team could actually fit into that hall at that time. And when I told them that you're coming, everyone was scared. Okay, what is going to happen? What is he going to say? Are we going to lose our jobs? That was the thing. I don't know why that was the thing. Are we going to lose our jobs? Why is he coming? and by the end of it there were people on the floor laughing <laughs> because you told them punchlines you're telling them stories i don't think we discussed an ounce of work but you g- gave them such a insight in life that was such a big life lesson which i had seen that side 
they had not seen after that day i think a lot of them changed and the way the what i think the punchlines do is they encapsulate life lessons in these short sentences and if people who actually follow those punchlines one is you hear it and you oh, you laugh and you clap and you go on but you need to take one two of them and actually follow them in life they will take you far but many people forget to do that they will only hear and then goes out the other ear but you should not maybe not take all but at least say one two three and actually use them in your life i have used so many of your punchlines in my life and it's made me i think a better businessman is made, made me a better husband is made me a better father so thank you for that yeah i must tell you here what why i got fascinated by punchlines i think the three most popular heroes in india are rajnikanth amitabh and salman khan now these three guys have every movie a half a dozen punch line which people will forget movies songs camera but the punch lines are talked uh, even on trains buses so these punch lines are uh, communicating in short in crisp it's a, it's a literally a nectar of a story nectar of life so i also learned uh, bit late only after 40 years of age i understood uh, you know you have two sentence if you can communicate why you have to talk two paragraphs that's how the punch lines came in and i don't know maybe i am lucky enough uh, fortunate enough or blessed enough when you keep asking question you are allowing me to not only to listen also to prepare answer and my answer comes in the form of a punch line and then you are shocked that this man could so fast come back with such a powerful punch line i think this has been my uh, some of the unique uh, blessings of maybe poverty maybe village maybe the challenges which i faced maybe all the movies i saw and in the movies where i focused was punch lines not on the romance of the hero and the heroine so literally speaking i today is known uh, in my circles people who know me will tell me sir tell one punch line so that's something like you know tell one joke the guy who gets humor he is having audience and the guy who tells punch line has more audience and humor are punch line to understand you need iq <laughs> and then i am fortunate people who love my punch line are having higher iq and they are around me so this is how its evolution but i believe uh, these punch lines uh, 90% of them are made by me and uh, you know some of my punch lines in hindi are uh, very unique uh, though for me hindi itself was not a language until i was 25 years of age i believe that it is something which my brain processes and stores i have a stock of roughly around 1000 uh, punch lines and at any given instant you don't need more than a dozen so everybody sees uh, you know this man is uh, creating while Mm, talking because then punch lines are rarely repeating so to that extent it's a dictionary, dictionary which in which we use only the words which we want rest of this in the dictionary so i think you should write a book which is one punch line a page and maybe a small story behind it because some of them are so powerful and they're life changing so earlier you mentioned a hero and heroine so so tell us about the heroine in your story yeah again you know going to mumbai was not uh, planned getting a job in brc was not dreamt and for marriage uh, i uh, and i left my home my mother i promised that i will marry a girl from village and uh, that promise was very essential for my mother to feel confident about uh, son and his long term um, presence around her but then uh, four years went in mumbai not that i fell in love with any girl though there were many girls i could have fallen in love and i don't think any girl came and told me i love you either so literally speaking it was a very smooth life <laughs> and then uh, my father in law was then working in brc as a security officer and you know every father who has a marriageable age daughter has to love a boy 
and that's how he cited me and found me and he came up with the proposal oh wow and, uh, uh, i was living in anushakti nagar which is a brc quarters she was also living in anushakti nagar because her father was a security officer in brc many will tell it's a love marriage but uh, to be very honest i was working from 6 am to 9 pm in my office so there was no room to love i think boys who enjoy their work will not have truly uh, option also to get distracted so literally speaking it was a uh, father in law uh, induced a uh, yeah, bond and then i when he proposed first i refused because uh, my mother i promised that i will marry a girl from village this girl was born and brought up in mumbai and then he persuaded then i thought let me have a look at a girl and then take a call because you don't have to spend money to look at a girl <laughs> and then i had a look at the girl and not truly that my mother will appreciate you know mothers always have a dream daughter in law in their uh, heart so i thought uh, i should not go ahead but then again my father in law persuaded i think this is very important that uh, you know ego should not be there you should uh, persuade with uh, uh, as much as possible and i was living as a paying guest and i told my landlady a maharashtrian lady that uh, if he comes tell i am not there so five times he managed the sixth time he told money you only manage it uh, i can't keep on telling lies so then i sat in front of him and i was about to tell him that uh, this marriage will not work but i have seen the girl if you now tell the marriage will not work the father will feel hurt had i not seen the girl i could have always told you know i want uh, this kind that kind and that that's not now possible so within uh, this is the speed brain speed mm. within few seconds after sitting in front of him i decided not to hurt him mm. but to meet the girl again and dissuade her nice so i asked him can i talk to her for an hour mm. he said yes i will arrange so it was arranged in 14th floor of state bank of india head office in madam kama road where she was working okay <laughs> so uh, the reason to consider the proposal was nothing other than a bank job which will make my family to become economically more stable i think it's very important people should not bluff in nonsense uh, very often it is economy driven decisions and it it's for me uh, that was a very big uh, plus point so i was there at 2 o'clock on a saturday afternoon which was a half a day working for them and then uh, one hour and 55 minutes i only talked and 5 uh, minutes there was absolute silence which means he didn't talk a single word that's a surprise a bombay born girl and not talking anything a girl first and then bombay born girl and that too in front of a boy who is likely to marry no question at all then i thought that she doesn't like me and i also told her if you still want to marry me you send your father to my home tonight otherwise tell him there is something wrong with the boy a very easy way of dissuading but then what i talked is very important for everybody to understand how to dissuade i said very clearly look i am living as a paying guest there is a likelihood lifelong paying guest you should be prepared for it now there was silence look in village i have a house but it doesn't have a toilet you must understand what it means again there was a silence look for my parents i am the eldest son which means i am everything for them and you are supposed to make sure all wishes of parents are fulfilled look for all my siblings i am the eldest their marriages their happiness everything is your responsibility look for our marriage i don't have money you only have to fund it last but not the least you funding our marriage should not be known to your father 
I don't think any insane girl will uh, agree for that marriage. But then that night my father-in-law came to my home. And then I asked him, did you talk to your daughter? He said, yes. When? Five o'clock in the afternoon only I talked. That means now it's clear. And then I said, you can proceed. I will uh, uh, convince my parents. And mind you, parents were not knowing what is happening. <laughs> and I am, have already committed to my father-in-law that go ahead, I will convince my parents. I want one punchline here mm. to be uh, documented. Mm. In life, either you can discuss or you can decide. Mm. You can't do both. Mm. Very often people think after discussion you can decide. It doesn't happen. So I didn't discuss with my parents. They were informed mm. that I have finalized the girl. <laughs> And they didn't question. That's Very another nice. greatness of that parents. is that is great. So here, and one thing I want you to uh, also uh, keep in my mind, your mind, because why did she agree for this marriage? Of course, there is a government job. That's uh, the background. As much as the State Bank of India is the background for the other side. But she said uh, after a couple of months of engagement, when I asked her. What did you like in me? Mm. My nose, my chin. What is that you liked that you didn't get discouraged? Mm. She said, one thing I understood, you are a good storyteller. <laughs> Second thing I understood, you are trying to dissuade me. Because normally boys tell my father-in-law is, my mama is an income tax officer. My chacha is a police uh, in, uh, mm -hmm. chief. Mm -hmm. That is how people will exaggerate and tell. You are telling what you don't have, which is understood that you don't want to marry me. Mm -hmm. The third thing is most important. I didn't want to be a short daughter-in-law in a tall house. I wanted to be a tall daughter-in-law in a short house. I think this is a very big message for people. That, uh, you know, bada chada ke, you always uh, get into marriage, that collapses very fast. If you don't have, create an expectation, you are likely to live in heaven. So that's how the marriage was through. And then uh, it was in 1986. And uh, even on marriage, there was a bit of argument between me and my father-in-law. Mm. My father-in-law wanted to invest, invite 1,000 people. Now, as a boy, I said also then invite 1,000 people. I don't have. So I told, uh, no, it's only 50 people. Mm. He told, no, look, this is my daughter's, my family's first marriage. Mm. I told my family also it's first marriage only. Then he was a bit annoyed. I told, look, 200 is all right. Because I wanted him to come to 200. Okay, 200 is all right. How many you will bring? Only 50. No, how that is? Then my wife took my father-in-law inside and told, please agree. And he agreed. <laughs> <laughs> the message here is very simple. Of course, uh, there is a punchline for that. The cost of the marriage and the happiness out of the marriage are not directly related. So that's something which many people don't understand. They spend a crore on marriage. And after a month or so, the daughter comes back crying. That's not at all pleasure, right? Absolutely. So I think I didn't spend for my marriage. What I spent for marriage is very difficult even to believe. It was 10,000 rupees wow. in 1986. <laughs> by the way, for finishing my PhD, all expenditure from my first standard to PhD was only 10,000 rupees. So, there are a few things which I don't think the current generation will believe it. But then uh, uh, my days were different, decades were different, money value was also different. Those days, 10,000 is almost today 2 lakhs. But then in 2 lakhs today, even no. So, so you know, married in 2 lakhs. So, sir, uh, when did you decide to start Thyrocare? What was the journey to, like, how did you decide I want to start my own business? Leaving a government job, starting your own business is never a very easy decision. Yeah, I think I think you need to uh, capture what, how I became from a boy to a man, because that is when a man only should do business, boy should not do business. This is my another punchline. 
I was in thyroid and I did not know uh, much of thyroid and uh, here a little emotional uh, background is needed because that cannot be hidden. I was working under a blind man as a subordinate which means for him I am not a subordinate, I am a servant because I have to help him in everything. Now, he was a scientist. He lost his eyesight at 40. And until 40, he was a very powerful scientist. Now, I am his eyes. I have to read science for him. Fortunately, I got that job of reading science to my superior, which is very rare. You can teach always a, a subordinate. Now, I am uh, literally reading science for my superior, which means my learning process is faster. Within uh, another three years, four years, uh, he understood I am only a B.Sc. Now I have enough of uh, uh, exposure to that thyroid science. He felt I should do an MSc in thyroid biochemistry. And he went out of way to get me registered in Mumbai University as a MSc student and doing research and writing thesis and thyroid biochemistry. I think uh, he was very happy that without his support, I could manage to do the degree again. So, because I was uh, faithful, obedient, good, nice to him. You know, very often people say, I had a poor boss. The same guy will tell, I had a wrong wife. Same guy will tell, my father was horrible. But a guy will tell my mother was good, my wife was good, my boss was good, and for me, my boss was good. <laughs> and he was good because I was good to him. I think first be good to others, they will be good to you. So he arranged for my MSc in biochemistry in Mumbai University out of way. And he was highly pleased that I could finish in a shortest period of time. And I did a good piece of work also. I had a couple of research publications out of my MSc work. And then he motivated me to do a PhD, both MSc and PhD in thyroid. So I think what was happening in that period of 1982 to 1995, 14 long years, an unmarried man becomes married, gets two children, children grow, children go to school. This is the social life. Whereas professionally came with a BSc, did an MSc, did a PhD, came, joined as an assistant, then became an officer and all increments in time, all promotions in time. Everything is so unbelievable. And when I look at the campus of BRC, huge uh, lawns, uh, hospitals, uh, colleges, uh, primary schools. I think anybody who are inside that campus will get opiated. I use the word opiated because it gives you a feeling that it's uh, you know something great. But somewhere my mind said, uh, uh, you know, I keep telling one punchline. Jine aya ya jitne aya. आया तो जीने के लिए लेकिन पंचलेन बोलते वक्त मुझे बोलना है कि जीने आया या जीतने आया जीना तो कोई मतलब मैं भी जी सकता था मुंबई तक आया तो कुछ ना कुछ कर दिखा सो माय माइंड वाज थिंकिंग दैट डोंट सेटल इन अ कंफर्ट जोन यू ब्रेक इट सेकंड जन थिंग अगेन अ पंचलेन बड़ा होना है या बुड्ढा होना है बुढ़ा तो अपने आप होता है वो भी सरकार नौकरी में जल्दी होता है बड़ा बनना है तो रिस्क लेना एंड आई मस्ट टेल यू आई एम फ्रॉम कोयम्बटोर दिस सेइंग ऑफ माइन इज नॉट इन तमिलनाडु इट इज इन कोयम्बटोर टू दैट एक्सटेंड लोकल द सेइंग इज आई विल ट्रांसलेट इन हिंदी एंड टेल यू एक लंबा बाल खींचो उसमें एक नाट बांधो एक पहाड़ के ऊपर डालो खींचो आया तो पहाड़ गया तो बाल वेरी नाउ दिस इज अ वेरी पावरफुल पंचल एंड एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप इज नथिंग डिफरेंट फ्रॉम देयर यू इन्वेस्ट 10 लाख एंड क्रिएट 100 करोड़ दिस इज द रिस्क व्हिच वी नीड टू टेक सो आई थॉट आई शुड नाउ टेक अ कॉल देन अगेन यू नो आई डिडंट डिस्कस विद माय वाइफ 
I think I am a firm believer if you want to truly take a decision, don't discuss with anyone, especially with your family. Because they were the one who will discourage you. Again, my punchline comes here. What is easy to do is not right to do. What is right to do is not easy to do. And your family members want always you to do what is easy to do. So that's a loop in which you will be exit. You won't be able to proceed. <laughs> So I took a decision and I think many will feel that, you know, is that decision making that simple? I don't want to misguide. I want them to understand the background in which I am taking decision. Background is simple. All my colleagues already have purchased two bedroom hall kitchen. I was the only guy without house. That means all of them had an EMI for next 20 years. I was the only guy without EMI, number one. Number two, we had a joint account, me and my wife, and for 15 years, my wife did not touch my salary and she used only her salary to run the family. Which means I had a closing balance of 2 lakh rupees in 1995, which is equivalent to 2 crore rupees today. Nice. Third, oh. my monthly expenditure was only half of my wife's salary and my family will never suffer because my wife is working. Hmm. <laughs> so there's a backup in case something goes wrong. Suta to bal. Decision taken, and then that night uh, I resigned and went home. And it, dinner uh, table, there was no table to dinner. Now those days it was no furnitures. We were sitting and taking food. I didn't tell anything to my wife regarding my resignation. Night two o'clock, she found me not sleeping. So she asked me, "Kya aaj ab soya nahi hai?" I told her uh, I have resigned. She was shocked. Until that time, she was uh, horizontal. Then she became vertical. And she went and put on the light. And she looked at my eyes. And she said, if you don't go to office from tomorrow, even I will not go. Now, this comes as a dumb key. Right? But then, you know, one of my popular punchline which is Rajinikanth's punchline as well as uh, Salman Khan's. That's the kind of uh, punchline which I put into my wife. And the minute she said that, until that time I was horizontal, then I also became vertical. <laughs> and I told her, Chalo, saath jiyenge, saath marenge. I think that's uh, a unique day in life where me leaving government job, she leaving bank job, and both of us giving up jobs on the same day with five-year-old son, three-year-old daughter at an age of 37 makes this as the biggest ever risk one can take. That's something which I believe is the main reason for the success of the story. Many people tell that, you know, I won't resign, I will take a leave. Uh, do the business. If the business succeeds, then I will take a call. And let me tell here one more punchline. If there is a plan B, plan A doesn't work. So don't keep a plan B unnecessarily. Plan A has to succeed. So it succeeded. So in fact, there is one more punchline of my wife, which is, uh, you know, she didn't tell us a punchline. She used words and uh, told me, but I can uh, put it in punchline. I asked her, I was the one who took a risk to give up the job because you were having a job. When you knew that I have resigned and then you take a decision to not to go, can I explain the rationale? What she said was, I know and you know you will succeed. But only I know, not you, mm. that you can't succeed without me. Oh. <laughs> a very powerful, very powerful way of uh, communicating because that time we have lived for some 13, 14 years. And she knew how I can be channelized, how I can be motivated. She was the biggest fan for me. And she felt that whatever she can't achieve in life, she can use me and get things done for the family. So, in fact, she was my biggest uh, fan, ambassador, everything. So, that way, I think uh, there is a, that uh, also makes me to tell that punchline, which many businessmen love to hear. If your spouse trusts you, your energy is 10x. 
and if the spouse doubts you your energy is 0.1x <laughs> now i have very carefully used the word spouse i didn't tell wife or husband it's very important because <laughs> very often people you know get carried away so for me it was her energy which made my energy many times uh, amplified so that's uh, something which i keep on uh, weaving it uh, in between and mind you all those conditions which i said to her in that one hour Uh, she fulfilled all conditions and there was never one condition she did could do a very powerful lady so that is how i left the brc job and for many people even in brc it was a shock mm. and then uh, obviously if you do what your neighbor does mm. you won't achieve anything different mm. if you do something which a neighbor is worried shocked that means uh, you are into something great so that gives rise to one punch one more punch line if everybody appreciates you that means it was a wrong decision <laughs> <laughs> so interesting <laughs> uh, so when you started thyro care why did you call it thyro care was that the first name or did it start with a different name no i think it's very very important mm. very very Mm, emotional i didn't want to put velumani pathology laboratory because a madras is sitting in maharashtra uh, okay go <laughs> <laughs> i don't want uh, irritated unnecessarily in in bombay either uh, uh, gujaratis marwadis or maharashtrians only can do business madrasi ka board kahi dekhna bahut kam milta hai agar dega to bhi it should be some dukan where you get some south indian uh, items that's all so then uh, i thought my name is not good and my name is not something which uh, you know like uh, you know akash uh, anand it can be in, in marathi also but it is velu mani and that means maya the second i didn't have any girlfriend to put her name <laughs> and uh, i knew only thyra it one thing good about phd one thing good about phd when you do you know only one subject in which you have done phd and you don't know anything else because you have invested so much time only on one subject you can't remember even what else was <laughs> so why to put a board that uh, we do all the test here doesn't make sense that everybody does my first logo was thyro care all in thyroid and only thyroid there were only seven test possible in thyroid my price list was only seven tests i didn't do cbc i didn't do blood sugar which everybody does wanted. correct all this is a shock to the industry even my friends hari ek gram gland ek gland 15 gram roti milega kya wow what a way of looking at i told them look desh mein 100 crore hai country has 100 crore thyroid hmm. all are mine only <laughs> so, so this is how i approached the thyro care as a, a name hmm. i think when i exited uh, if i sat and calculated what is the value which i got mm. half was for my business mm. half was my brand so please name correctly mm. brand correctly work correctly it makes you richest otherwise you become just rich so i fortunately had that uh, today inside it looks like very many had a vision but trust me i didn't uh, expect it to give me this kind of a uh, recognition and identity so i think then i only thyroid was there and then subsequently thyroid is a women related disorder many people gave me work which is related to women in terms of infertility then i was getting those tests done from a competition for some time the volume was substantial then i thought why do i need not have an ego when a business comes i must do it so thyroid then infertility then pregnancy then uh, growth then cancer markers then finally when i made a full many it was complete metabolism so people probably many don't know that i do test other than thyroid also but my in my business uh, uh, value wise uh, thyroid was only 25% uh, non thyroid was 75% so when you started thyroid in the first 4 5 years what were the challenges that you faced 
I think this is not anything new. Every child born, every business born will have similar challenges. In some cases, children have servant and mother and everybody around always to help. So he is in business. Somebody, father or a, you know, a mentor or an investor is always around to guide. But the problems remains the problems. And first and foremost, Madrasi doing business in Bombay is one big problem. Second problem is uh, a scientist uh, doing entrepreneurship is uh, another challenge. The third thing is a uh, madrasi doing a national balance business is seen to be something totally uh, out of box. And then, you know, you get people waiting for queue for a job only in established companies, not in the companies which are yet not known. So getting talent, training them, retaining them. And um, of course, uh, I never had funds problem, which very often people have funds problem. Today also many people ask me, how did you build a billion dollar brand without borrowing, without an investor? So I think fortunate for me, I think it is worth telling a punchline mm. here to motivate mm. entrepreneurs. I never opened my syringe before a patient opened the purse. <laughs> nice. Who is funding my business? Mm. Customer. <laughs> Customer is funding your business. And um, I, I remember uh, when I first visited a laboratory, you told me a story about why you all do testing at night. When you started, I think you used to collect samples in the day and used to do testing at night. Was that the... I'll tell you, there is a song of uh, Rajanikanth. The picture name is Padayapa. The song goes like this. Life is full of stumbling blocks. Life is full of stumbling blocks. It is like while you run, there are plenty of speed breakers. But for the intelligent, every speed breaker is a stepping stone. Very, very profound. If you get intimidated, you are gone. But if you start using them, you are very powerful. I'll tell you a, very f a few things which I did, which were block, which became power. Knowing only thyroid is a block, mm. but then that's the power. True. Number two, had I had enough money, mm. I would have not put thyro care. Mm. I would have employed enough pathologists and put all tests done here. Mm. I would have not focused. Mm. So my focus came because of that block. True. The next, I was poor. So my pricing itself was poor people, not for the rich man. So the pricing itself was low. I didn't have money to have a vice president marketing, vice president uh, processing. I had to do the marketing in the day which means I have to do the testing only in the night. So the night processing started because of the stumbling block. I didn't have enough funds to employ people. Right. So if you notice it, there are a dozen number of things which, which were responsible for me to do that thing in that way. And I was not feeling shy. And it worked. So I think today, retrospectively, when I analyze, Newspapers are collected, news is collected in the day. Newspapers are printed in the night and they're delivered in the morning. I was the first guy in the pathology industry, collect the samples in the day, process them in the night and deliver them in the early morning, which no one in the country ever thought of. Even today, no one in the world is ever thinking of using night time to create a yeah, extra time available for you to deliver before the time. So I think this was something which happened uh, and then my business was needing a sample to reach to the laboratory. So what I did, do, in fact, very few understand that my strength is not science and technology, it is logistics. From 25 air connected cities across the country, every night, same night, before midnight, I used to get the consignment on my floor, which I don't think Blue Dot can have. <laughs> now, this is the most powerful way of transporting the specimen and in a small while, 
Many people believe that transporting vial by air will be very costly. A box of 10 kilogram can bring 2000 vials. So 2000 vials is 2000 rupees. So one rupee per vial. So if you look at it, all my business is arithmetics, numerator, denominator and uh, numbers. So I believe that and all is because of my again poverty, upbringing, mathematics which helps me to uh, arrive at decision making faster. So many things have helped me but this night working, this uh, air cargo logistics and also one more thing is uh, I have only employed freshers. The, there are reasons for that. When I was 19 years old, finished at BSc. When I went for interviews, I was rejected because I didn't have experience. Gade, <laughs> first give me job, <laughs> then comes experience. <laughs> it is almost, you know, like sitting in front of a girl whom you are likely mm. to get married mm. and asking her, how many children do you have? <laughs> what a kind of uh, insult for them. And that too, you know, I they know clearly my uh, exam is done only in June. And in July, they are asking, do you have experience? So I thought, uh, you know, those days itself, one day if I become an employer, it's a fantasy. It came true finally. Mm -hmm. If one day I become an employer, I will only employ freshers. I will not take experienced. Trust me, I have employed 15,000 freshers in my journey of uh, 25 years. And then this happens to be again a very big plus point. Now, first 10 freshers I took, I taught all of them personally. Then 100 people came by the room, by the own classroom, all 100 I taught them. Mm -hmm. Subsequently, I have not been teaching employees. Employees only teach employees and punch line here. If you teach, if you, if you train 100 days an employee in your organization, mm. it is much better than a thousand days experience from the competition. That's a very unique way. Absolutely. I mean, industry had around 25% HR cost. Mm. I had only 11% HR cost. So the, I think, let me tell you for any business, for any entrepreneur, three most vital areas you must master, IT, HR, logistics. Mm. Rest is all product, rest is all the same market, everything. IT, HR, logistics. So logistics I managed by getting the same sample every night at home, at uh, the floor. Correct. HR I managed because uh, I could understand uh, a well-trained man produces 3x output than ill-trained. So third thing is uh, IT. There was no IT 27 years back in healthcare industry. Mm. Because the computers itself came only 30 years back, mm. not before that. Mm. So I was the first guy because I was a mathematician. I loved computers and I used to use computers to make data entry and using those days, Lotus 1, 2, 3 was the program, <laughs> what we call today Excel sheet. Mm -hmm. And then using that slowly, I generated a software. I think uh, by 10 years of my involvement into IT, we had a first of unique kind of IT mm. where specimen were barcoded, machines were bidirectionally connecting between analyzer and the server. Mm. Literally speaking, that brought down the cost, improved the efficiency, reduced the error. So I was the first guy who ran a laboratory which was IT enabled, monitored, controlled. So that's the unique uh, uh, absolute journey. Uh, when we met and you had come to office, you had told me uh, two, three things. You had asked me, uh, and that time we were hardly about 100 odd people. And you said, uh, Ashwin, how many people are there in your HR team? And that time I had only two. And you had told me, no, 10% of your company should be HR. And it, I didn't understand like, why do I need so many people? Now today, 10% of our company is HR because uh, what I realized is when you're growing, when you need a person, if you have more recruiters, if you have more people in HR, you're able to get a person quickly. Today, if somebody leaves, we don't cry about it. It's sad that a good resource is going, but we get a replacement quite easily, very quickly. We get more talented people even. The second thing you told me is 10% of your company should be tech. That time I had one, one resource in tech. 
Today, we have more than about 20, 25 people in tech, the tech team. And but that's become the backbone of our entire organization. Today, scaling is so much easier. When we, when we opened four new labs in the pandemic, was go add a new lab, add a, because all the SOPs are in your system. Everything is system driven, so process driven. But today, tech has put us light years ahead of our competitors and in our field. So thank you for that guidance. Yeah, here I want to add one punchline. Business is nothing but, business is nothing but having more people than needed and keeping all engaged. So if you need 100 people, have 120 people and make sure all 120 are busy. So this is something which many people don't understand. They think that employee is an expenditure. They don't think employee is an investment. If your employee is an expenditure, why did you start business? You should have been an employee suffer <laughs> someone else. So this is where very often people are uh, confused. I keep the very first question I ask, how many people you have? Okay, last three years, how many you have added? You have not added. But if you don't add it, where, where, where from growth will come? So they will always tell me, sir, if growth comes, I will add. Come on, guys. Without people, how do you get growth? So True. this is something which uh, fortunately it worked for me. Uh, what are the top three metrics according to you that every business should track? I think uh, business is nothing but growth of top line, growth of profits, happiness of customers. These are the three matrices. Of course, the fourth one, if I have to add a uh, happiness of uh, employees, I think uh, the growth of profit is happiness of the investors. So okay. you see only this, these three, these three only are the stakeholders in the organization. You need to keep all of them not happiest, happy. Because it's impossible to keep everybody happiest because then, you know, everything will not be affordable. Somebody will be happiest, other people then will be happiest. Yes. Upset. So I think drawing a balance between all the three and making sure that all of them are uh, happy is uh, in, in, in broader terms. But in specifics as a business, you need to know where each penny of you comes from and where each penny of you is spent for. I think these two things are the very, very important. I believe somebody who can do analytics well, analytics in time, create an index for each department and making that each department to improve that index, uh, what we call as cost per lakh, which means uh, you should know to get a lakh business, what are your costs? To do testing or to do servicing for a lakh, what is your HR cost? What is your floor cost? What is your electricity cost? Take top 10 expenditures and look at what are the cost. So once you do the cost per lakh calculation, you have quantified. Then a QMI. QMI is first quantified. What is quantified, you can monitor. And what is monitored, you know, automatically improve. So I think this is something whenever I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs, they were not aware of this should be done. I think once I teach them how to look at numbers and how to monitor them, how to improve them, everybody sees there is a fair uh, uh, comfort in navigating the business. Two more things very important is mean age of the employee and also mean salary of the employee. I think these two things should be, if monitored well, companies should grow, mean age should not grow, <laughs> companies should, pro turnover should grow, percentage of ex employee cost should not grow, salary should grow, but percentage of employee cost should not grow. This is mathematics. Absolutely. And as long as you have done it, it's done. Having said that, the most important is growth because growth is a, a number which comes into denominator in every calculation. Age is happening. Inflation is happening. If growth is not happening, a company is sinking. Mm. So this is what made Air India sinking. And this is what made Indigo shiny. So there is on both same industry. Correct. So I think in the mean age, again, if you see Air India and Indigo, it's totally different. 
True. Mean salary, very different. So it's very important. We need to benchmark with the best and then improve on it. Sir, a uh, few years ago, you exited Thyrocare. What was the thought behind it? What, 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 what was going through your mind when that offer came or did you reach out to them? Did he reach out to you? How did that happen? Yeah, even before that, uh, a few things about the company mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. need to be uh, understood so that you will understand what made me to come to that conclusion. I started a company without knowing what's company. And then I understood what are different companies. Then I understood why not we have a public limited company. Mm -hmm. Then I thought, why not a listed company? And then why not we take investors inside? And then I took private equity guys inside without a purpose, without a need, without funds. Mm -hmm. And then those guys had to go out. And while going out, I did an IPO that made uh, the general public to become the shareholders. Unfortunately, on the day when I, uh, on the quarter when I had the IPO, I lost my wife. And uh, it looked like I was uh, double engined uh, Sarkar. Today, people tell uh, uh, double engine Sarkar. Mine was a double engine growth. And uh, the minute I lost her, I lost interest in business. But then, you know, you can't suddenly do what you want. And I took a decision that I will not run this company for too long, even uh, the day I lost my wife. But then the uh, processes were good, uh, uh, operations were going on well. And I also strongly believe if you go and sell, it is 20% less. If somebody comes and asks, it is 20% more. So I was not in a hurry to go and pitch to anyone. And then it took five, six years. Uh, company was not doing that well and then suddenly covid came then covid came the entire diagnostic industry had a very different look i was the first laboratory in the first list approved by government as private laboratory list to do covid pcr testing so that became a national news thyrocare is recognized there were only five labs in the first list and that gave me recognition in the entire country specifically state of Maharashtra, where we had a collection center in every district. So the state government felt I would be able to do the best job and they gave me a lot of business. We had a capacity to produce only 400 tests a night. And then within 10 months time, I became 40,000 tests a night facility. I had empty space. I created a lot of uh, capacity. And then uh, the turnover, what was there was a crore a day. Then that became a two crores a day. Oh, wow. Due because of COVID. And then the share price was uh, only 450 rupees before the onset of COVID. It shoot to 1300 uh, uh, during COVID. And things were going on all right. At that time, uh, I think uh, somebody fell in love with Thyrocare. And then I thought this is the right time to discuss. And I quoted 20% more than what was the market price. And I think, uh, you know, it's like this. If a girl has fallen in love, hmm. uh, your job is simple then. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I could, in fact, the entire deal was through even two hours time. Oh, wow. And the deal of the size went in two hours. The... Time taken was two hours and the deal size was uh, 7,400 crore worth company. And uh, there were a, a half a dozen M MBS uh, who were IAM, IIT, and I was alone, which always makes me to uh, remember the punchline of Rajinikanth. He says in Tamil, mm. single, single avaru, mm. panniya kootam avaru which means a lion will come alone only, <laughs> pigs, pigs only will come together. <laughs> but then these guys wanted me to, they thought they have a power to negotiate. And in fact, they asked me a question, are you alone for discussion? Hey, I am alone, I'm, I don't need anyone. And then they thought probably they will uh, put all their knowledge, qualification, experience put together to put. And I say, uh, you know, once again, I t told a number, and that number I didn't uh, change, right? Simply, it was two and, two and a half hours. They only wasted time. 
<laughs> you are literally the only person I know who can do a deal of that size saying this is my number and every story that you've told me about negotiation has always been that once you take a decision hold on that decision could I, I know there is a story about your houses a story about your first investor second investor I don't know anyone who's told a second investor I will not say you go to my investors can you tell that story that was a that was an amazing story yeah in that way every time I tell a number and then uh, these guys always feel well when he tells a number anybody tells a number is negotiable negotiable mm. because it's not that it is written in gadget somewhere it is this price I think the stock price the land price also your bungalow price is a demand supply driven it's a 25 percent more or 25 percent less depending upon the demand so i knew it very clearly second when you don't want to sell you get the maximum value <laughs> So, I, the first guys, when they came for the dilution of my stock first time, uh, they had already come to me. I didn't want to dilute. And uh, they asked me, what is the value? I told the value is uh, 400 crore. 400? What logic? I only told you. You also, you only all know the logics. For me, only logic is, you are on my table. <laughs> bit annoyed they were and they were about to sip the coffee but they kept it and went away i thought okay one wonderful i didn't want to sell but then same guys after six months again came and this time i knew that 400 was right otherwise they won't come and then i said 500 so two quarters back 400 suddenly 500 yeah it is doing well, company is doing well. Before the coffee came, they went away because they were annoyed. <laughs> the same guy comes only third time again. I didn't want to waste my coffees. <laughs> I straight away said 600. <laughs> and they said, checkbook liar. <laughs> Literally speaking, within a uh, one year period, what I quoted 400, same guys bought it at 600. Wow. Now, another one year goes, mm. one more guy comes, mm. sent by them. Mm. I know that they are sent by them. Mm. They also said, mm. we have come because they said. Mm. Then I thought I should uh, not go 100, 100. Mm. They will buy away all. Mm. Should go by 200, 200. Mm. Believe me, all these calculations are very fast going in the mind. Man chata ta, hajar bolu. Mo se nikla baraso. The guy said, we have brought the checkbook. Within one year, 600 becomes a tal. So, in that way, I also went for an IPO. The IPO was at uh, 2400 value and uh, IPO got 74 times subscribed. Right? So, it looks like uh, God has been, had been uh, unkind to me till I came to Mumbai. Then understanding that it was uh, his bias and then positive bias towards me probably is the journey. I believe that that is how it is. In fact, yesterday I was talking to someone. I struggled a lot to come up in life. But when I struggled, I didn't come up. But then I have come up in life and I am looking what is the reason I am unable to understand. <laughs> because I think the, when you struggle, you develop strength. I don't know how and all one can explain. <laughs> this when I told yesterday. People were seeing, how do you analyze things, right? <laughs> I always tell people, if you struggle to come up in life, you will not come up in life. When you go, oh, when you come up in life, it is because of that struggle, that uh, decades back mm. is making you powerful. Brilliant. Um, so now that uh, Thylocare has been taken over by Pharmacy, how are you spending your time? What projects are you working on? What are you doing next? 
actually i was uh, thinking of exiting but the exit suddenly came it was the six years of thinking all happened only in six weeks so that's the way in which it happened so i was unprepared and uh, i didn't have a house throughout my life and then i didn't know one day i will sell completely and the house in which i am living is inside the company and i have to vacate so oh, that's a very emotional day once again and then i got my full money in hand and then now living in that is uh, not making a, what you call as ethical sense so then i didn't want to live in mumbai for two reasons one is all my connects with mumbai was only through my wife she is not there so i somehow felt i don't need to be sitting in this city and then second one is uh, i anyhow i have not bought a house so my children felt to let us explore we went in mumbai a house which my children liked was roughly around 100 crore and then i said why not we explore bangalore they willingly came and the house which i have bought is only 15 crore the house 15 crore and the house 100 crore in mumbai are more or less same size wise same ambience wise better here and more than anything as bangalore has a, a very good weather and i am away from the city and i am connected more to the airport so if you look at it it is calm clean quiet comfort all the seas are there so cheap <laughs> and that makes it a clever move it's a clever <laughs> one more see <laughs> Brilliant. So I uh, uh, that's the change in uh, living place and I didn't have an agenda that I should do this uh, so that immediately I then jump and do something else for me doing a, a something else is an option now but then somehow I feel uh, you know I'm 63 now there is a likelihood I might go in 65 I might go 75 and I might go in 85 Uh, these are the three uh, uh, different stages of life i am seeing if i go in 65 i don't need to do anything i must sit and relax <laughs> take deep breath <laughs> but if i'm going to die at 85 25 years of this man with so much of a wisdom so much of an experience so much of an understanding about people businesses possibilities so should i waste it so only the last couple of quarters i've been working on uh, Uh, why not we replicate thyroker success story in uh, gulf arabic uh, world and in the arabic world uh, uh, all what was there in india in diagnostic industry 20 years back is what is there for disruption oh wow in india diagnostics is completely disrupted i myself disrupted so i thought i should sit there and disrupt that and nice. there is a next 10 years a likelihood and you know inr to dollar is 83 whereas uh, dinar to uh, dinar to dollar is uh, only 5 uh, which means i can make more money in less time and less value so my mind says why not you focus there for the last couple of quarters i have been spending time there the remaining time i am seeing people with uh, 50 crore plus 100 crore plus turnovers i interact with them i tell them what they should look into why uh, i tell them what and all they are missing in fact there is a punchline now i did business in diagnostics now i can diagnose the business <laughs> <laughs> i remember uh, the last time uh, we met at uh, the lonavla house you had told me i think the fire disease that just gone through and uh, you had told me uh, you know i was telling you ki sir you know you should start something where you are educating people have like a gurukul kind of a thing because i didn't know the houses had gone that time and the other two houses were empty but actually house people you know who could come and stay with you for some time and then that time you mentioned the concept to me that you want to start something called add a zero scale a zero scale a zero is that something you are bringing to yes life actually uh, there are so many pundits in the market all of them claim so much all of them take so much of fees uh, many very often entrepreneurs 
don't believe them can't afford them and they feel that this guy may misguide us so this is the reason why people don't accept somebody's claim mm. and there are so many in the market yeah. and there are guys who have done nothing say that you can become richer when they them can can become richer if they can make somebody else richer why they are not becoming richer so this is like a college professor college professor is good at making powerpoints that make it communicating what will work but then that is a generalist it's not applicable to you your business your market your market your product your era your iq everything is so subjective so what i used to think and even now i am thinking is if i meet an entrepreneur and if he has already started growing and going on but he is not going on in a speed in which he is happy about look at that business look at it from an outsider uh, not as an insider what is that in that industry he can do in terms of uh, optimizations in terms of growth strategies so i felt i must offer him my services without any upfront payment on a condition if one zero is added you give me 10% equity if it is not added i don't need it that i think is an offer that nobody can refuse ever it's like a godfather offer i think that a scale a zero i didn't take off uh, till now seriously because it needs a process and the process the man in front need to understand what it is and he should seriously understand and then we should document that this is how the relationship is and then you work on it i am planning to have a small team of some 10 people who will make sure that uh, uh, unnecessary noise is not there and uh, unnecessary expectation is not there and since it is going to be only on reaching a number i thought i should uh, uh, start it so scale at zero i am doing already without any documentation any even promise for a couple of people but i believe at some stage i will tell them this is how this relationship will if your choice is if you want you continue to avail otherwise uh, i am not going to invest time on you so because if i see attraction and if he doesn't contribute for that then it's not making sense but i think i am a, such a, a kind of man who can always add value always add new ideas because business is not reaching a, a goal business is a journey so that's something which i believe very few people understand so i am also mentoring a, a company with 1000 crore plus turnover and then i am not keen to get a 10% there because uh, 10 crore to 100 crore i can ask 10% but then on uh, a 1000 crore of course if taking to 10000 crore is not uh, that not. simple <laughs> but i haven't uh, sat and discuss with them what i will get i will get what i deserve <laughs> without a, without a doubt <laughs> documentation sir all uh, not making much of a sense documentation is only to see what is our understanding So I think you also taught me something earlier that a good document doesn't you need to open the document again. <laughs> if you are reading, if you are reading the document again and again, then means you are looking at what are the terms of divorce. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Uh, last two, last two questions of mine. Uh, so today, your son and daughter, who is to also work in Thyrocare, are no longer there. what do you wish for them what do you see them doing in the future or what would you like to them for them to do in the future a very difficult uh, uh, question to answer uh, if you look at from the societal point of view recently i had a discussion with my children and uh, both of, both of them ask me dad in brc you could have been a 5 crore net worth man what more you needed in life why did you leave brc job okay you left it at a 50 crore net worth you should have left more than 50 crore can you consume okay you are a mad man at least at 500 crore you should have exited 
Thank God you exited at 5,000. <laughs> Not <laughs> Now what you want us to do? <laughs> now the very tough question because they have fooled me by, they have told me I'm a fool and uh, I am agreeing that it was a journey unnecessarily. And there is a saying which some one of my friend told me, the closing balance on the date of your death is an unwanted work you have done in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Now you have to figure out to spend all the money quickly. <laughs> so I don't have a necessity to press, uh, press them to do this, that, number one. Okay. Number two, they also have their own pressures as much as uh, Abhishek Bachchan has got, as much as uh, Rohan Gavaskar had, as much as uh, Arjun Tendulkar has. So, they also have a problem. I don't want them to be one more cricketer and get compared with the father cricketer. <laughs> true, true. Very true. So, they are yet to choose something to do in life and they don't want to in a hurry pick up. They can't do a 10 crore, 20 crore uh, enterprise. They have to do at least a 5,000 crore enterprise. <laughs> So, yes, sir, I am looking at from their angle. It's a very, very challenging it one. It is a very challenging one. And then my children kept on asking me, keep on asking me, Dad, had your father been so rich, do you think you would have done what you have done? No, I can't. Now tell us what we should do. So, all these things uh, together comes in. But I think what I want uh, uh, similar parents uh, to take a message is, be frugal, make your children frugal. Now in my journey, if at all I have to see what made me very powerful. My mother was extremely frugal because without money she could raise children. My wife was extremely frugal because without spending my money, her money alone, she found the family running very well. I was frugal because my entire 25 years of journey I have never borrowed for a company or personally. My children are more frugal than I am, which means what? Which means if you are frugal, you don't have to suffer. To that point, sir, I have a small story. I don't know if I've shared this with you. Uh, after the whole uh, takeover, I mean, uh, far, farm easy deal, Amrita had come to office. And uh, so I asked her, I'm like, hey, you know, how is this experience? You now, after all this exit, all, how, how are you feeling? How are things different? She says, not in different by this much. I said, what do you mean? She's like, Ashwin, to come here, I was booking an Uber. And I was still deciding, should I take that mini or should I take premium? Like, you can buy half of Uber India, but you are still deciding on whether to take a premium or a mini. So that showed me two things. One, obviously, how she is, but how have you? You've got them up in such a way, which is, I think, aspiration. Forget the level of money people have. But having that kind of humility, having that kind of, uh, you know, uh, frugality in you, even when you have that kind of money, it, it requires a different breed of a parent to be able to produce something. See, at any age of 20, I spent 50% of my earning. Mm. Frugal. Mm. At an age of 30, I only spent 20% of my earning. At an age of 60, I was only spending 0.01% of my earning. At the age of 30, my children are spending only 0.0001%. Now, look at the kind of <laughs> frugality. So, I think it's very important that uh, children need not become a spendthrift and then to spend, they struggle, do immoral things, undergo pressure, a lot of things happening. Okay. I think I want this message also to be understood, digested by parents. No parents teaching a child how to live happy. All parents are teaching children how to become rich. Becoming rich is no way of becoming happy. Really? In other words, if you are not happy, you can't become rich either. <laughs> so this is something which parents have to keep in their mind. Goal in life is to live happy. Goal in life is not to uh, accumulate uh, too much of wealth or power. If it comes, it comes, but happiness is must. I think my children are 95% um, happy. And if 5%, if they are not happy, they are thinking that we are not as happy as our father is. <laughs> <laughs> so, my last uh, question for you is, 
there are a lot of people who want to start out their entrepreneur journey. What advice would you give them? Very, very tough question again to answer to someone who is younger to me. <laughs> but if someone is as old as me, I can freely talk. <laughs> but uh, having said that, uh, the day when I started business, the word entrepreneur was not existing, venture capital was not existing, startup was not existing, ESOP was not existing. So I belong to a totally a different era. Today is totally different. Those days the dream is join in a company, reach to the CEO position and retire in that company. Mm. This is a dream which uh, people of my age had. True. Then slowly people thought 10 years work in a company, 15 years in a company, learn business and then start a business. That is again my era. Today, uh, children when they finish the college in the third year itself, there are two E cells. One is employ employment cell, another is entrepreneur cell. And there is more crowd in entrepreneur cell than in the employee cell. Because people believe, see I don't want to work for someone else. But someone else has to work for you, no? <laughs> so literally speaking, today's generation is restless, greedy, too much of uh, in a hurry. I think I have been telling and I want to, this to be recorded. Ma banne ke liye ek umar hota hai. Entrepreneur banne ke liye bhi ek umar. Uh. <laughs> right? It's a very, very uh, apt way of looking at it. A girl can become pregnant in 18, sorry, even 15. But then that's not the right age to. So he is a man whose father is earning very well, can start a business even in 20. That's not the age to. I think entrepreneurs should work for 10 years. In that field, they want to become powerful. A small company which is 100 employees work there for 10 years and if this 100 employees become 1000 employees and if uh, 10 crore turnover becomes 100 crore turnover and the company has grown because of you, you are now entitled to start the business. So whose money you are wasting to learn business? Your employer. You are getting paid. So first, I, th I, I always want people to think of business in 35. So I, I did it. That doesn't uh, uh, tell that because I did, I want it to be done. I believe until you become 35, what do you know about market, product, brand, uh, logistics, IT, HR, how many, 20 different things you have to manage. If you have started too early, you will have you then you need partners to manage one one each segment and 10 people together, nothing succeeds. So this is one advice I have is to start uh, at an appropriate age, number one. Number two, an entrepreneur is not, you know, many people start thinking that I don't have to sit in office for eight hours. But they forget that once you are entrepreneur, your job is starting from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. <laughs> so that is a shock which comes to me. By the way, that reminds me to tell you that some people in my thyroid care came to invite me for marriage. You know, it's a uh, employee age is 25, so every day somebody will come and I receive the invitation and I read it and I keep it and I shake and congratulations. Now tell me beta, on the day of marriage all your problems solved or on the marriage only all your problems starts. <laughs> the fellow gets completely sweat. He is thinking what I will do, he is asking such a correct question. Had he not invited everybody, he would have not been going for marriage. Now he has finished him inviting everyone, now he can't avoid it. And then I tell him, don't worry, I also got married. Only thing is, don't get into marriage with too much of expectations. It will be disaster. Go without expectation, number one. Number two, the problems are not going to stop. The problems will be different. <laughs> different than the problem. <laughs> so when somebody starts a business, it is not their problems are all solved. It's the problems will be different. In, in fact, the problems could be more tougher. Earlier it was much uh, easier. 
So that about the background of uh, when to start, what to expect. Mm. But having said that, I think again I told earlier, IT, HR, logistics, these three are the most mm. important one. Mm. And very often you ask an entrepreneur, what is the block you have? 99% of the people tell, I don't have funds. And that gives rise to one more punchline. Mm. If you have no problem other than funds, if you think that you have no problem other than funds, when the funds come, that becomes one more problem. <laughs> Many have got into it. And funds never come free, of course, there is no free meal anywhere. So I want them to understand that. The next point, once again, is business is not a 100 meter dash. It's a marathon race. Don't get disappointed too early. So many people are stuck there. They tell projections and tell to father-in-law, uh, everybody around, So don't promise anyone. You keep working. The next point is, don't have mentor. That's very, very important. That is interesting. Because if you have a mentor, then once again, you are dependent on someone. You don't learn. He only guides. There are only a dozen problems in life. In doing business, there are only a dozen. If you have learned that dozen by failing and reworking, you will never have a problems tomorrow. So it is almost like, you know, what you what people hold like this and walk. Something known as uh, uh, some kind of uh, support. Mm. Crutches. Once you get used to it, without that you can't walk. Interesting. So mentors are most likely to make you dependent on them. So you be careful about it. The next one is, there is no mentor possible for you because your era is different. That man is 30 years old, otherwise he is not your mentor. His era was non-computer era, yours is a Google, Facebook, Insta era. You, then product is not same, market is not same. What is same? How can you guide? He guide you. <laughs> so it's something people don't understand. But you can always have a sounding board with whom you can discuss. And then the punchline is, Suno sapki, karo apni. Right? That's something which many people don't do it. I think that's very important for uh, uh, youth. And the punchline is, success is never a problem. Success is never a problem. Sustaining the success is the biggest problem. And don't get too early success, it's not sustainable. Right? And then some couple of Hindi punchlines are there. Jo kaam karte hain, jo kaam karte hain, wo budde hote hain. Jo kaam karate hain, wo bade hote hain. So make sure work is got done. Never sit and do the work. Teach someone how to do that work. Make sure that he is uh, doing it better than even what you do. And then uh, one more thing is uh, risk taking. Jo kona chata hai, wo kabhi kota nahi hai. Jo kona chata hai, wo kabhi kota nahi hai. Jo kone se darta hai, wo kabhi paata nahi hai. So this is a very powerful punchline because people don't take risks and people price it high. They don't price it low. When you price it high, you success of success chances are low. If you price it low, success is certain. Profits may not be that big. But then volume comes, you can make profit. So generally, people make mistakes there. One and, more punchline. Hmm. If you know pricing, if you know pricing, you can do business. But if you know costing, you can disrupt the business. <laughs> Many people don't understand the casting and they price it uh, safely and then they survive. Correct. Whereas pricing it low is an uh, art. And True. I think it works and it worked for me. For Thairo carriage work beautiful. Yes. And uh, there is another uh, another universal punchline. Jo jitata hai, jo jitata hai, o sayad har sakta hai, lekin jo jitata hai, o kabi harata nahi hai. So, jitao, logon ka jitao, team ko jitao, parivar ko jitao, sab ko jitao, jo bhi aas paas mein, sab ko jitao, jit aap ki hoti hai. So, this is also another way of uh, looking at it. Brilliant, brilliant, sir. Sir, you mentioned something earlier. You said that uh, you shouldn't have mentors. Mentors, you know, that the generational difference can be a problem. 
and I've always considered you a mentor, but you've never ever told me you have to do this way. You've always just given me a perspective. Whenever I've come to you with a problem, I've possibly come with a couple of solutions. You've always told me, okay, you can possibly, you know, look at option three. Why don't you multiply it by two more? You've given me perspectives which have opened up my mind. Rather than telling me, Ashwin, this is the only thing you have to do, don't do anything else. And you were in a position where you could told me and I would have done it also. But you've never done that. You've always opened my eyes to another perspective. And that has been, that, that guiding force has been very, very powerful for me. And I'm hoping that when you do, uh, you know, scale to zero, a uh, scale of zero, that that is something you're able to bring to a lot more entrepreneurs. I know I have benefited from it tremendously. And I'm hoping that a lot more entrepreneurs also benefit from it. Yeah, there are two kinds of mentors. Hmm. There are two kinds of fathers. One father will sit and teach you what he knows. He doesn't teach you what you can do. Hmm. So this is something which is uh, happening. 90% are only fathers who will tell the child what I know, you know, you should know and what is this I know and you know that. That's all. There are 10% uh, uh, of the parents, mm. why only fathers, I said, well, parents who allow the child to learn on its own. And when the child comes and asks a question, they will answer. Mm. And the child will, may not ask a question and may learn on its own. Mm. If you want me to uh, explain you in a layman language, there are good number of parents mm. who walk with children holding their hands. That means you are arresting the movement. There are good number of parents who will keep the finger free. If you want, you can hold. That means the child has an option to hold when needed, if needed. Mentoring should be like that. Very often, there are mentors who have never succeeded in business. But then they tell, I know this, you should know, know this. I did it, you should do it. But that time you should know you did it, but you didn't succeed. <laughs> So, a mentor is supposed to have had a journey. In that journey, he should have seen all kinds of challenges. And then when sit in front of a man, you should understand what kind of, all kind of limitations he will have. And then tell what a few things which worked with, with you and tell him that thing might work for him. And if he has really been a mentee, he would experiment and he will come back and give a feedback, sir, it works very well. Otherwise, what he will do is, uh, it didn't work for me. Then he changed mentor. Right? <laughs> you know, very often people think changing job means growth. <laughs> changing mentor is not growth. <laughs> true. Very, very true. Sir, thank you so much for taking out this time. Uh, I know it's been a while since we have I know, had this kind of a conversation and you are somebody who I've been wanting to, when I started this journey, I wanted you. And thank you so much for making this time and sharing all your different punchlines, sharing all your different experiences, many of them so personal, many of them very emotional as well. Thank you for taking out the time and sharing all this. It means a lot to me. Good, good. I'm happy if this can reach to more people and uh, it can energize them. It can enlighten them, it can empower them, then they become entrepreneurs. So I am heard in many social media platform people love to listen. And then my messages are some, something the husband shares with wife and the parents share with children and even employers share with employees. And I was told even employees share with employers. So, I think it's the ultimate truth of uh, life, which anyway told is making sense. And it is more for prosperity, more for happiness and uh, more for success. It's not for wealth accumulation. I don't uh, believe chasing money ever you can get money. But if you do right things and if you continue to do right things. Very often people do right things, but they don't continue to do that because of which they not only lost the momentum, they have even lost what they created. So in that way, uh, many people see my the going to Mumbai seen by all Tamilians as he is a very daring and dynamic man. And leaving BRC job makes all scientists to think, wow, what a risk he has taken in life. 
and the cruising of business with some unique business uh, concept has made my competitors to think well, what a man he is he came yesterday he is ahead of us and then my exit makes the entire entrepreneurial community uh, there is no life if you don't exit if you don't exit you don't exist <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a fantastic fantastic uh, uh, fantastic way of ending the uh, podcast so thank you so much it was a, a real pleasure and uh, to all the viewers please listen to this episode again pause every time sir says the word punchline write it down you can put it in the comments below on all the punchlines and sir i hope that someday you make a book if you need me to i may i help to make a book i'll help you make a book because these punchlines need to be shared with millions because there's so much wisdom packed in them and thank you so much for sharing your time and your punchlines thank you very much ashwin it has been always a pleasure to meet people who considers uh, consider you as uh, their uh, 24/7 mentors also you are a ardent fans if you meet you also get lot more energy and yes writing book is uh, tried for last so many in fact 10 years uh, i've been trying mm. but let me honestly admit using mm. a punchline mm. a storyteller is can never be a story writer and a story writer can never be a storyteller so if you find someone who can write a story he can sit next to me and listen to the story and put that story into a book format i tried and it didn't work i think it is like oh, a man good at mrudangam mm. cannot be good at violin mm. these are two different talents which i think uh, people should know what they are good at and do that thank you very much and i wish you a very a very empowered journey Uh, for decades of uh, creating more jobs creating more prosperity thank you thank you so much it means a lot thank you so much